have the words, what's wrong with me? Or, I'm not a stupid person, how has this happened ever passed your lips? And could these statements be stopping you from getting closure? Welcome to the Divorce Sanctuary. I'm Elizabeth, author of Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. On this channel, I talk about healing from emotional abuse and divorcing emotionally from the abuser. I want to remind you that love should be unconditional and divorcing emotionally and healing the original wound is life-changing. I want to help you understand and process what's happening inside you and help you discover the best tools to heal on a deeper level, becoming the best version of yourself. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're returning, welcome back. And thank you to all my new subscribers over the last few weeks and months. It's amazing. Thank you for your support. And if you're watching this and you have any tips that you think would be helpful to others, please add them in the comments. I want to remind you this isn't a diagnostic tool and I'm not going to say it's for entertainment purposes only because nothing about this behavior is entertaining. If you believe that you are being manipulated, please reach out to a professional who can help you break away from the toxic relationship and help you set and keep strong boundaries. Have you ever asked what's wrong with me? Or thought, I'm not a stupid person, how has this happened? And you're not actually getting closure. Coming out of an abusive relationship is painful on every level and these wounds are real. So you went into battle, you didn't sign up to fight or for war, but that's exactly what happened. Unlike a physical wound, you can't see the hurt or the pain. And you might even hear people around you say, shouldn't you be over this by now? And you then wonder if the abuse was right and this is all your fault. There's something wrong with you. They told you that people were worried about you and they made you believe this was all your fault. They pointed everything out that you did wrong. What was wrong with you? You are left hanging and you might not get closure if you have a wound of not being good enough. Despite you having hard evidence in front of you, you very possibly still believe them. And if you stay to the end, I'll share with you how to help challenge that part and step forward. And coming out of this type of relationship raises more questions than you get answers for. You get no closure and you've just been left hanging. You're trying to get answers to understand what happened, to make sense of the feeling of overwhelm. You're trying to balance your emotions. Very possibly you're trying to get them back. These wounds, as I said, are much like a physical wound. The wounds I'm talking about are invisible, like a ligament or a small fracture. They're very painful. And when I talk about healing and giving them the right support and nurturing and time, you can also heal these wounds. And one of the questions I have for you is, have you not got closure from this relationship due to some of these wounds and the statements that are holding you back? I've got a couple of examples. These are real people. I have changed some of the details to protect them. Susanna was on her second marriage. Her husband left her for a young woman. She said this woman had been present in their marriage and she felt that she'd always been compared to her. She said that her husband had asked her to dye her hair brunette as he fantasized about brunettes. The woman he left her for was brunette. In the early stages of the relationship, Susanna said that he was always talking about her. She apparently was interested in their sex life and during the course of their marriage, he was spending more and more time with this other woman. Initially, she found it hard to function after he left. She was told by her estranged husband it was all in her head and there was nothing between them. Susanna said her therapist looked her straight in the eye and said, brothers and sisters have sex when she told him that they were just friends and that the other woman was more like a sister. She said it took her a long time to get cl the closure she needed. She got stuck. Cognitive dissonance had been bouncing around, knowing her marriage had been unhealthy, but wondering why she wasn't good enough. And when we worked on her wounds, she found a small child who had been abandoned by her mother, her mother favoring Susanna's siblings. And she said she experienced similar emotions. And she said to me after our session that it was strange as during the relationship, she had noticed habits. Her now ex-husband had that had reminded her at the time of her mother. You might be feeling a deep sense of abandonment. You've lost everything. You may have stayed longer than you wanted to, believing the promises of change. That feeling of abandonment runs deep and it might feel familiar to you, like an old friend. 
and it's possible that you became acquainted with abandonment during your childhood and you might not be able to recall the memory but just have a feeling. It's our hippocampus that's responsible for our recall memory. So you might not recall the original wounding that took place as the brain isn't fully developed, but that wounding can still take place. When that loss takes place, it sends messages that are stored in your body. Just like that broken bone or torn muscle, there's damage that takes place. You might be feeling a deep sense of betrayal as you realise the re reality was not what you had been promised and it was false. The fake future you created together, the lies that you're now discovering and you might also be asking yourself if the abuser ever did love you. With other statements like, was this all a lie? This is a feeling of betrayal and it also runs deep. And like the sibling of abandonment, you might it might feel familiar to you. And it, again, it's possible you became acquainted with it in childhood. Again, like the abandonment wounds, these messages are stored in your body. And with our other core wound, our third one, which is shame, it might be shame that you believed the stories. It was too good to be true. Shame at the way you might have behaved to protect the relationship. And it might be shame of abandoning yourself. Again, like the others, this might be familiar to you and you might remember being shamed as a child. Harriet is somebody else that I work with and she'd been left by her partner with their young daughter. He'd had an affair with a woman she thought that was a friend. She said that they would all go out on a Friday and this woman would often stay over with them. She said she'd never thought this woman was sleeping with her partner. She found it hard to get closure, wondering what was wrong with her and why she wasn't good enough. She said she worked on her physical body as she felt that this was what had turned her partner off and towards the friend. She said her partner came back to her and she felt like she'd won. When we worked on her wounds, she found a small child who'd been abandoned by her father. He wasn't present in her life, even though he lived in the family home. He was focused on work and at weekends he did his own thing. And during our session, she was able to heal these wounds. The abuser is like a computer po programmer trying to hack into a computer system or a structural engineer who's entering an unsafe building. He's found a route in but when you raise a few concerns and question them, this part of the building is unsafe. So the engineer will, like your abuser, retreat to a place of safety. And this is the part of the cycle of abuse. The engineer might go and find something to prop that part of the building up. The abuser is planning his route back in as well. The abuser plays with your emotions. They have a toolbox ready to use to trap you further into the relationship. Gaslighting is a covert aggressive way of distorting another person's perception of reality to the point that this person questions their sanity or their memory. Triangulation is another tool that they love, introducing people into the relationship. And this is what Susanna experienced, making her feel jealous, or it's done to coerce you into doing something or behaving in a way that is against your beliefs. They claim you have trust issues, and you then start to question yourself. And it's these wounds that are created in childhood that are the original wounds. And because of this programming, you probably found yourself in an abusive environment as an adult, searching for relationships that confirm the messages that you receive. You are being taught at a young age that it's okay to be abused. It's okay for you to take the blame for others' mistakes. As a child, you might not have knowingly experienced a trauma that activated the fight, flight, form, freeze response. And research is now starting to question if the child who can't concentrate for a long period of time, who's absent-minded and has attention problems, may actually be stuck in a trauma response. Tuning out is an adaptive response. A child that is witnessing verbal abuse or it's being directed at them can't do anything about it. I have used this example recently. I saw a video with Gabor Mate and he was asking a person what they would do if they were in that situation. And he said, you've got lots of different options. You could get up and you could walk away or you could turn to the person next to you and say, can you help me? This person isn't being very nice. 
he said, think of a young child. Who can they ask? And when you can't fight back, you find ways of protecting yourself and your brain takes over to protect you. You possibly disassociate from the abuse and this might be really short term however you get stuck here and it's likely the reason you stay so long in a relationship is because you don't see the abuse because you've experienced it in other relationships you learn to cope with it in your childhood and closure might be hard to get if you have a wounding of comparison of not feeling good enough or wondering what is wrong with me what did I do wrong? Why am I not good enough? Whether or not the abuser knew what they were doing or not, I can't say. But I do ask you to be honest with yourself now so that you can track down what it was that let this person in and what you need to do to heal from. It's the one thing that I suggest is these honest conversations. I think therapy, talking therapy is amazing but you get to a point where you need to go in and do deeper work and heal these wounds. The abuser has taken everything from you and then poof, like a genie, they've disappeared. Taking with them the fake future that you created together. They leave you a shell of your former self. You can barely function and you're trying to find answers. You gave them everything, believing that this was for your future. The proverbial slot machine. You keep pumping your time, your energy, your money in. You gave up everything. You're very possibly feeling lonely and empty, searching for anything that will transport you back to the life that you had. And I'm going to be brutally honest, you might be like I was, prepared to do anything or put up with anything just so that you don't have to feel awful emotions. But that route is short-lived. You will be the centre of their world again for a very short amount of time. You'll put back on that pedestal, but that time gets shorter and shorter. You get trapped in that trauma bond and the trauma you experience causes deep damage. We have three core wounds, abandonment, shame and betrayal. Do you recognise the wounds that you were given and have you been in one or more abusive relationships. The original wound is where this started. It is the one you received as a young child and this trauma, much like a physical wound, is very, very painful. Learn to talk to your wounds. You will empower them. You will also empower yourself and naturally you become repellent to manipulators. Lean into the voice and see if you can hear how a sentence is constructed as you'll start to learn where these phrases and words come from, where these beliefs come from. And ask yourself, are these questions and these emotions of not feeling good enough and comparing yourself to the person the abuser is now with, are these stopping you from getting the closure that you need? If you found this video helpful in some way, please like and share and subscribe. I will link my workbook, The Essential Criteria for Creating a Perfect Healing Plan. And this will help you pick up the pieces and help you acknowledge and put you back on the correct course of your life. If you know anybody that would benefit from hearing this, please forward it on to them. I'm sending you loads and loads of love.